Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody back to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about a very important subject that has received very little research, and yet I get a lot of questions about it, particularly from females with ADHD, and that is on the effect of female hormones on ADHD symptoms across the lifespan. And as it turns out, just this week, a review of the literature, as well as a proposal of a theory of how these hormones impact girls and women with ADHD appeared in the journal Hormones and Behavior. You can see here multiple authors, beginning with Ashley Eng, but also including my good friend Michelle Martel over at the University of Kentucky. This is a very important article, so if you are interested in this, please have a look at the paper. The hot link is over in the thumbnail sketch associated with this video, uh, but I find that it's very understandable, particularly for educated people. But it's, I think, a very important paper that sets the stage for future research that needs to be done in this area. We have known for a long time, based on simply the reports of our patients, that women with ADHD report fluctuations in the level of their ADHD and executive functioning deficits as a consequence of their life cycle during their reproductive years, from the onset of puberty and menses through pregnancy to perimenopause and menopause. But there was almost no research up until a few years ago on this topic, and the research remained very small, probably less than five studies I'm aware of on this topic. But this paper reviews what is known, not just about ADHD, but the larger area of the effects of hormones and their fluctuation on uh, females, their behavior, their risk for comorbid disorders like depression and eating disorders, uh, and then looking at the relative fluctuations of estrogen with progesterone to create what they call a two-phase theory of hormonal sensitivity that they think is going to have relevance for understanding ADHD in women. So uh, let's have a look at this because what these authors are proposing is that there are four stages in the reproductive life cycle of women at which they are going to get hit with a whammy to double whammy when it comes to what these hormones are doing to their not only ADHD symptoms, but relatedly to their executive functioning and emotion regulation, and possibly even risk for comorbid irritability and depression. So they talk about this in the context of the fact that at puberty, we know that there's a second burst in the incidence of ADHD in women in the population. And this helps us to understand the gender differences or sex differences in ADHD that go back decades, where we have known that in childhood, three times more boys than girls have ADHD. But by puberty, that rate goes down to about two to one. And by adulthood, the rate of men to women with ADHD is nearly equal at about one and a half males to females. Now, what is going on across development to alter these sex ratios? This paper, I think, provides a very important explanation for why this might be. There are several stages at which women, particularly girls and women who are sub-threshold ADHD, may be pushed into the clinical range of ADHD by changes in their hormones. And one of those is the onset of puberty in the beginning of their menses. When there is a rise in both female hormones, estrogen and progesterone, and this rise triggers a sensitivity of brain networks and if those networks are particularly those in the executive brain, the prefrontal cortex, and its linkages throughout the brain, we could see a rise in ADHD symptoms. And you talk about here a preliminary pilot study that they conducted right here that suggests just that. 
says, our preliminary work suggests that there is a substantial activation of hormonal effects on ADHD across the menstrual cycle, specifically in non-clinical women that they recruited between 18 and 25. They found that declines in one type of estrogen, E2, estradiol 2, predicted clinically significant two-fold increase in ADHD symptoms of inattention and hyperactivity during that particular change. So declines in estrogen generally appear to be associated with exacerbation of ADHD symptoms. The rise of ADHD, or excuse me, the rise of these hormones at the onset of puberty also suggests an activation and a sensitivity. So no wonder then that at puberty, it seems like there's the strong possibility that more women than men will develop their ADHD around this time because of these hormonal effects. I think it's a very important hypothesis uh, that likely will stand up over time. Then the second area where this is affecting women is going to be throughout the menstrual cycle. So that as these hormones rise and fall in proportion to each other, we're going to see different effects on ADHD according to these writers, according to their theory. So at the beginning of the month, as estrogen is falling, as we get toward the uh, ovulation stage of the cycle, but progesterone is staying the same, we can expect to see a rise in hyperactive impulsive behavior, risk-taking, an increase in executive functioning deficits, and possibly changes in emotion regulation as well. So these changes are occurring as a result of the withdrawal of estrogen approaching the ovulation part of the cycle. So that would suggest then that girls and women during mid-cycle are gonna be at greater risk for impulsive, hyperactive, executive deficits, and problems with emotion regulation, possibly leading to an increased risk of risk-taking behavior, by the way, as well as alcohol consumption. Then as the cycle continues, and we see that estrogen may decline, but progesterone levels are changing. So the relative distribution of these two may then lead to a different set of problems, an increase in inattention, an increase in irritability, and possibly in dysthymic or depressive symptoms late in the cycle, right around the perimenstrual phase of their monthly cycle. So that's the second place that hormones could be impacting ADHD, changing the nature of ADHD that is exacerbating certain symptoms over others, depending on the stage of their cycle. And this also explains why clinicians who have worked with young women uh, have often told me that they adjust medication and even add additional medication at different stages of the month to help women manage their ADHD and those period-related exacerbations. The third place where ADHD may come into play is when pregnancy occurs. And then there are radical changes in these hormones. And many women talk about the onset of an ADHD brain associated with their pregnancy difficulties with working memory, with concentration, with attention, and so on, not to mention changes in emotion regulation and mood that all may occur during pregnancy. So that women with ADHD who then become pregnant may find an exacerbation of certain aspects of their ADHD symptom profile and executive deficits. And then finally, the fourth phase where these hormones may have an effect, according to these authors, is during perimenopause and menopause proper itself, when we see these hormones changing again, and we often hear women talking about at this stage an exacerbation of their symptoms, such as greater inattention, poorer working memory, difficulties with emotion regulation. We've even had instances where we see a rise in referrals of women to clinics that is coincident with the onset of perimenopause or menopause, where women who weren't necessarily ADHD previously or were able to cope with 
elevated symptoms that may not have been in the clinical range now find themselves fully clinically ADHD as they approach mid to late life. So uh, again, a very important paper that sets the stage for how we can do further research to test out their theory of this multiphasic impact of ADHD, or excuse me, of female symptoms or hormones on ADHD symptoms, and what we can expect to see within each of these stages, such as during the menstrual period in these alterations in ADHD symptoms. So I thought a very important review of the literature here, but particularly a presentation of a theory based on a lot of evidence from non-clinical samples from other disorders that we might be able to extrapolate over to ADHD to better understand what our female patients are telling us about symptom fluctuations during and after the reproductive lifespan that they have. So uh, I hope that you found this informative. I hope you'll go and have a look at this paper. Uh, it's easily understandable in my opinion. Uh, and then uh, I hope that you will, along with me, encourage further research on this very important topic of a sex difference between men and women with ADHD on the role that female hormones may have in generating some of these sex differences in symptoms. So thanks for joining me, everybody. I hope you found this informative. I'll see you again with another uh, video and research update later in the week. Take care and be well.